Voyager 1, launched in 1977, it was designed to explore the far reaches of our vast solar system. NASA sent it on a one-way journey into deep space. Now, 44 years later, the space probe is still wandering in the vastness of space, but not aimlessly. Running on its limited and almost depleted power source, Voyager 1 has made an astounding discovery. Remember the famous line from the movie Alien? In space, no one can hear you scream! Recently, Voyager 1 has proven this wrong. While it hasn't found aliens, it has heard a sort of scream. More accurately, a hum in space. What is this hum and where did it come from? Let's find out more. Where is Voyager 1 now? 44 years of sailing through the solar system has led Voyager 1 to a region known as interstellar space. In other words, it's a part of space in between the stars. Presently, Voyager 1 is the only man-made object that far away from Earth. To put it into numbers, the space probe is around 14 billion miles away from Earth. This is roughly the same distance that light travels in one day. And that's the same time that NASA scientists have to wait before they receive signals transmitted by Voyager 1. In other words, the data they receive from the space probe is a day late. In the same way, if NASA transmits an instruction to Voyager 1, it'll take a day before the space probe can respond. Getting back to interstellar space, is there anything in that place? It's way beyond the limits of the solar system, so you may think there's nothing out there. But that's not what Voyager 1 found. Just last May 10, the space probe transmitted an odd discovery. NASA scientists reported that it detected a faint hum coming from the region. They said, it's very faint and monotone because it's in a narrow frequency bandwidth. We're detecting the faint persistent hum of interstellar gas. Narrow frequency bandwidth means that the sound is composed of only a few frequencies that are close together. With that, the waveforms are not as different, so the hum is pretty much in one tune only. Think of a guitar string. When plucked, it only produces one note because the vibrations are in a narrow band of frequencies. A similar thing is going on with the interstellar gas detected by Voyager 1. This hum was detected by an instrument in Voyager 1 called a plasma wave system. This instrument detects changes in the plasma surrounding interstellar space. When the sun erupts, like in the case of a solar flare, the plasma gets disturbed and the plasma wave system detects that disturbance. When the sun is calmer though, that's when the system detects a hum. James Cordes of Cornell University describes the hum like a quiet or gentle rain. When there's a solar eruption and Voyager 1 can detect it, Cordes says it's like a lightning strike during a thunderstorm. Afterwards, it's back to gentle rain. The hum measures roughly 3 kilohertz, which sounds like a faint beep if converted to sound waves. Sometimes the tone can change slightly as the plasma waves move back and forth. What's so exciting about a small hum? Let's admit, this hum would have been a lot more exciting if it were a song from an alien race, but it's not. Even then, NASA scientists are thrilled with Voyager 1's latest discovery. As the space probe goes along and detects these hums, scientists can figure out how interstellar plasma is distributed across space. With more data, they can then map out the density of particles in interstellar space. There are very few particles in that region. Earth's atmosphere is billions of times more dense. According to Stella Koch Oker, a doctoral student in Cornell, the region of interstellar space where Voyager 1 is only has 0.1 atoms per cubic centimeter. The air we breathe, on the other hand, has billions of atoms per cubic centimeter. Also, because the tone of the hum is changing every now and again, it gives clues on the nature of interstellar plasma. The most obvious is that this plasma is dynamic. Its density changes over time. Oker and her colleagues continue to monitor the data, using it to study how interstellar plasma behaves around that region of space. How is Voyager 1 still operational? 
How does a machine that was first turned on 44 years ago remain on after such a long time? Voyager 1 must have some really powerful batteries. The fact is, Voyager 1, as well as its twin, Voyager 2, uses a unique power system unlike the ones that power our devices here on Earth. They're not batteries in the conventional sense. Instead, they're a bit like small nuclear reactors. The Voyager probes are powered by what are known as radioisotope thermal generators, or RTGs. These RTGs use radioactive material as an energy source. In the case of the Voyager probes, their radioactive material of choice is plutonium-238. As the plutonium decays, it generates heat, which is then converted to electricity. The plutonium decays steadily over time, so pretty soon the fuel will run out and the Voyager probes will shut down. At launch, both Voyagers were generating 470 watts of power. Now it's down to 270 watts, just a little over half the power they had in 1977. Each year, the RTGs lose about 0.8% of their original capacity, so if we do the math, they have lost about 35% of their total power capacity. Keeping the space probes operational is not an easy task, though. NASA scientists have had to turn off a number of instruments in Voyager 1 to keep it running for this long. For example, after Voyager 1 exited the solar system, its cameras were turned off. There's nothing to see in interstellar space anyway, so NASA scientists decided to shut down the imaging systems to save power. Voyager 1's instruments also rely on heaters to maintain them. Without heaters, the instruments could freeze in the immense coldness of space. Heating consumes a lot of energy, so NASA scientists needed to turn off some of those heaters as well. Surprisingly, some instruments still fared quite well even when their heaters were shut down. For example, in 2011, NASA turned off the heater for the ultraviolet spectrometer in Voyager 1. That instrument was rated to function at minus 35 degrees Celsius, but NASA scientists were amazed to find out it was still operating even at minus 79 degrees Celsius. What is Voyager 1 still doing? Voyager 1 continues to fly off across interstellar space at a speed of about 38,000 miles per hour. At that speed, you can circle the entire world in a little less than 40 minutes. But in the vastness of interstellar space, 38,000 miles per hour is still turtle slow. Voyager 1 won't reach anything soon at that pace. The nearest star in its path, given its current speed, is still a staggering 40,000 Earth years away. Voyager 1 will most likely deplete its power supply long before it reaches that star. Current estimates indicate that the probe has until 2032 before its RTGs run out. To keep communicating with NASA scientists, Voyager 1 occasionally needs to reorient itself so its antenna is directly facing Earth. Without this so-called direct line of sight, Voyager 1 can't send and receive radio signals. The space probe repositions using tiny thrusters on its backside. Each time Voyager 1's antenna is a bit off, the thrusters fire off short puffs. These give enough force to rotate Voyager 1 back into its direct line of sight position. Voyager's thrusters use a kind of fuel called hydrazine. It's a limited supply, too, so if this runs out before the RTGs run out, NASA may lose contact with the space probe sooner. Once Voyager 1 shuts down, or once we lose contact with it, it'll continue to fly through interstellar space. It may well reach the Oort cloud, an area of space way outside the far reaches of the solar system. The Oort cloud is where comets are thought to originate, so that region of space is full of ice and dust particles. Hopefully Voyager 1 doesn't crash into an Oort cloud object, so it can reach that star 40,000 Earth years away. But whether it crashes or reaches that star or goes even beyond that, we would never know. One thing's for sure though, Voyager 1 is a marvel of engineering. The mere fact that it survived for this long and is still transmitting data gives us an idea of how well it was made. In the words of Ed Stone, one of Voyager's project scientists, 
Both Voyager probes are exploring regions never before visited, so every day is a day of discovery.